All right, let's go. Good morning. Come on, everybody. Come on in. Should be about six. Let's roll on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Good morning. Come on in. Invite your followers. While you're doing that, I'm going to try to get Facebook Live up as well. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning in Michigan. Hope to see you next week at the conference in Detroit. Good morning. Good morning, Apostle. All right, let's see. We're going to try to go Facebook Live as well today. Let's see how that works. I'll be there. Great. Looking forward to it. Blessings to you as well. All right, I'm trying to uh, let's get Facebook Live rolling. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I can't wait to meet, see the people from the Periscope fam, the Periscope posse. All right, y'all come on and invite your followers. Some, uh, all right, we missed a couple, we missed a day. We had, I and mean, I'm going to talk about that in a minute. We got to get everybody up, get, get everybody back rolling. Happy Friday. Blessings from Akron. All right. Okay. Invite your followers. Come on in. I'm still trying to see if I can do Facebook Live at the same time. I don't want to have to do two broadcasts. We're going to try to do them simultaneously today. See what kind of connection I'll get. All right, looks like I got a good connection. So give me one second. Invite your followers. We come in a little bit slow. Let's roll. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Time to get up. Y'all don't hear y'all uh, um, status thing go off this morning. <laughs> All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, let me get my little subject put in here and then we can get started. Glory to God. So listen, Detroit, next week we'll be in um, July um, 8th and 9th is the Deliverance Greetings Deliverance Conference Setting the Captives Free in Detroit with Apostle Sonia, Apostle Julia. Uh, the flyer is out on my page. It's on her page. It's a video. Just share, share, share. Let's get everybody involved. All right, let me get, I'm going to go live on Facebook. All right, great. So we got Facebook Live rolling. We've got, we're rolling on Periscope. All right, Periscope. So listen, great expectations. Oh, you're coming in. I think you're coming in from Milwaukee. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, listen, as we get ready, to, I, I, I want to teach a lesson out of what happened yesterday. All right. You know, I come on every day at six. Um, but yesterday, uh, well, the day before night, there was a storm that came through Durham. And so the storm came through. Well, welcome. Where are you from? So the storm came through. And the storm knocked out cell phone towers. Welcome, New York City. Um, I'm only literally a half a mile from a very tall cell phone tower. And we had either no signal in certain places of the house. Or we had 2G and one bar or two bars, which was not enough to broadcast on Periscope. So, and people started inboxing me later on and been getting to ask me. Um, I don't know, um, Apostle, we were looking for you yesterday. You know what happened. People tell me how much they missed the broadcast. So I want to take that, as I usually do, and um, 
take a lesson out of what happened on yesterday. Let me find my little note I had notes I had from yesterday. And um and so I want to give a lesson in spiritual warfare. So let me find my little notes. Facebook Live, good morning. And so I want to um look at that as far as um in spiritual warfare how the enemy will rise up to try to hinder you from doing what you do and I had a the perfect scripture and I'm trying to find it here in my notes But one of the things why we're why I'm looking for that in Ephesians two, and two and two, it talks about the prince of the power of the air. So let me do that while I'm looking for this other scripture that I had. I'm using old school. All right, Ephesians two and two. Ephesians two and two. Rain in Detroit and the power's out. Okay, what? Well, so it's something up with these storms. And so I'm going to uh, talk about this for a minute. Where, uh, Ephesians 2 says, Where in times past she walked according to the course of, the, of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And so the key thing I want to pull out the middle of that is the prince of the power of the air. All right? You know, we're talking about the enemy. We're talking about the devil. We're talking about these demonic entities that are in the, in the, in the, in the atmosphere. Okay. The prince of the power of the air. And so when you begin to deal, talking about the prince of the power of the air, you have to begin to examine and, and, and look at the, uh, airwaves. And that's what I wanted to talk about. The airwaves that the prince of the power of the air wants to hinder you and one of the ways that he will hinder us in this time is through the warfare that is created in the heavenlies or in the prince of the power of the air and so on yes. Uh, a couple of days ago, a storm blew in through here. We were on our way going to a meeting, and we looked up, and we saw this big black cloud. And um, it was like, man, that's unusual, because the cloud was really low. But yet the sun was yet still shining. And um, and so we said, man, that cloud is low. And then by the time we got where we were going, it started sprinkling a little bit, but yet in one area the sun was still out. And so... Um, then by the time we got out the car, it was pouring down. It was pouring down, uh, pouring down rain. And on that side of town, little do we know that on the other side of town, actually where we live, it was uh, raining. There was hail. Um, there was <laughs> there was hail. That's uh, that was hail coming down. There, there was a whole. It was a whole nother scenario on the other side of town. And so the point that I was getting at, it took out the uh, cell phone tower. So in spiritual warfare, one of the things that you have to remember or in any type of warfare um, is that the enemy's objective is to take out the communications to take out the communications if they could take if he could take the communications out if he can take the communications out and, and and interfere with the your ability to communicate amongst each other that that is that's a warfare strategy that is a warfare tactic that if I can keep you from communicating and once the communication goes out then they begin to, the enemy begins to begin to wreak havoc against uh, against you, and so as that happens, ha, 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 as that happens, 
um, then the enemy is able to begin to creep into um, and eat, creep into uh, regions and into your assignments. Now let me let, let me back up. Let me see. This is how this happens in. Um, so in natural warfare is this. So what would happen in, in, in natural war? You go in. They would attempt to blow up, uh, uh, bomb the again the communication towers. I remember when I used to work on a military base. If something happened and they didn't want this information to get out, they would use jamming devices and they would jam all communications. Your cell phones wouldn't work. They'd take down the internet. They would just they would take out all communications because they did not want any communication going between no information to be dispersed amongst you. Okay. And so that's what the enemy, the enemy, and, and this, this happens a couple ways. All right. I'm talking about right now, technology that the prince of the power of the air will take out the technology to prevent you from being able to communicate. And so now I'm connecting that with my Periscope broadcast. I'm connecting that with my Facebook Live broadcast. There are many people, people begin to inbox me and and, and, and tell me, listen, Apostle, we really enjoy your Periscopes. Uh, uh, some of us, you know, they were, some people were, basically this is what they were saying. We're out, of, we're in the desert. We're in a dry place. There, there's, we're not getting this kind of water. We're not getting this type of word. We're not getting this type of ministry. The, the, nobody is, is pouring into us uh, in, this, in, in this region the way that we receive on Periscope. And so that's let me know that the storm that came through, the enemy began to use that storm to take out the communication uh, so that the people could not receive the word. Now, let me give you the scripture in, in Job 27, and then y'all can follow me a little bit more of what I'm talking about. All right. Now, those of us that I was talking about spiritual warfare on last week, and I let you all know as we approached setting the captives free conference in Detroit, you cannot separate spiritual warfare and deliverance. You cannot separate deliverance from spiritual warfare. I told them this in my conference on last week is this. If you do spiritual warfare, it's going to cause manifestations. In other words, if you do spiritual warfare, deliverance will manifest. Okay. And then in or, if you do spiritual warfare, deliverance is going to manifest. And in order to get somebody delivered, you're actually engaging into spiritual warfare. All right? They go together. You can't separate the two. You've, you, you've got, you go in and you begin to war. And as you begin to war, things begin to manifest. All right, now check this out. So as I was... Uh, meditating on this last night because I almost came on last night and scoped last night. Uh, and so this is what the scripture the Lord showed me, gave me last night. Check this out. In Job 27 and uh, 21, it says this, the east wind carrieth him away and he departeth and as, as, and as a storm hurleth him out of his place. Let me read that again. I want y'all to catch it. Listen, it says the east wind carrieth him away. And so the wind from the storm sometimes is sent on us. This is, listen, I'm talking about warfare. The, the east wind uh, carrieth, the east wind carrieth him away. And so if you are, if you are placed, if you are anchored in a, in a certain spot, in a certain position, a certain place, the east wind will come forth out of a storm. Come on, listen, apply this to your life, that the storms that come into your life come to blow, to carry you away. In other words, if you're not anchored, if you're not solid, come on, if, if you, if you're not confident in what it is that you're doing that a, the storm that cometh out of the east will carry you away from where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing. Listen, the east wind carrieth him away and he departeth. Now, I know many people when you're dealing in ministry and when, and when we were, um, when I was uh, the set man in a local church, I would find out that when any when storms would come up in people's lives, and the wind would start blowing a little bit and things start not going the way that they wanted. They couldn't hardly function. 
The storm would come. It would blow up against them. Uh, things would happen on the job. Things would happen in the family, and then they couldn't hardly function in church. They couldn't hardly. Uh, uh, they, they couldn't. They couldn't serve. Uh, they were distracted. They allowed the storm that came into their life to move them out of their position. Come on. Now let me read this again. And so it says, "The east wind carried him away." Now, when we understand that the storm that's coming up against you is only spiritual warfare, it is only a spiritual warfare. It's only a war. And so the, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Come on. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. When we recognize that the storm that's coming against us is warfare to try to move you out of the way. Now, listen. The east wind cometh and carried him away, and he departed. Now, see, what you need to do is that we need to anchor ourselves and not allow the enemy to blow up against us and to cause us to move out of place, okay? Now, that's what it says, and it says, and he departed. And so you people leave their positions, people will leave their assignments because of the storm, because, because the wind is blowing hard, because the rains that are coming down in their life, come on, because of the hail that's coming down, come on. And so people give up, they move. It's the enemy's assignment to move you out of your position. Listen to me. It's his assignment, it's his strategy to try to move you out of position. I had a call, interesting call from a, a, a friend of mine that we started ministry together some um, 30 years ago almost now. And he's calling me because he's getting put into a, a sit, set in a position uh, uh, in, in the local church and he wanted to invite me to come up uh, to his to the service where he's getting ordained or getting set in um, in the local church. And one of the things that I thought about as we talked is that when we started out 30 years ago, everybody that started out with us in ministry almost 30 years ago are not in ministry today. They did not know how to deal with the storms that came in their life and they allowed the enemy to move them out of their place. All right, here, here it is again. The east wind carried him away and he departed. And as the storm hurled of him out of his place, the warfare that's coming against you is trying to hurl you out of your place. And so this is what happened. A storm came, I'm talking about a natural storm now. A, no, a natural storm came through the city took out the cell phone towers on my side of town. And so when 6 a.m. came, it knocked me out of my place and I could not bring you activate miracles. We didn't have any prayer. Come on. But out of it, come on, it was a lesson in spiritual warfare. Do not let the storm Hurl you out of your place. Family issues, family matters. Come on. Things coming up to move you out of your place. And so what I want you to say is, I want you to make this declaration. The storm won't move me out of my place. Come on. The storm will not, I will not allow the storm to move me out of my place. Now, one of the things about a warfare is this. An enemy only operates effectively in spiritual warfare when he goes undetected. An enemy only operates effectively when he goes undetected. Now, I've identified you. I've identified the prince of the power of the air, Ephesians 2 and 2, that you come through the airways to try to hinder the movement, the teaching, um, uh, the deliverance, come on, the miracles that God is releasing. But I identify you, the prince of the power of the air. I take authority over you. You will not interfere with my line of communication. You will not take out my towers, come on. You will not silence my voice. And so what I'm trying to say, the storm comes against the voice.
Show me some love on, on, um, on Periscope. I got my heart's glass. The storm is coming against your voice. The storm is trying to silence your voice. The storm is trying to keep the word from getting out. Come on. The storm is trying to stop the miracles. The storm is trying to hinder you from getting the impartation that you need so that you can be activated, stirred up, equipped, and released to do what God has called you to do. I will stand in my place. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to be like Habakkuk in chapter 2. I'm going to sit upon my watch. To see what is he, what he's going to say to me. I'm going to sit upon my watch. I will not allow the storm to move me out of my place. Come on. I'm not going to let the storm move me. Or a, a, a little bit of war. A little storm come. Come on. I don't understand how just a little storm comes. And we were, we're ready to throw in the towel. We're ready to give up. We're ready to quit. Just because a little storm comes in your life. Just because a little storm comes in your life. Just because a little pressure comes. Just because you get a press. Come on. How, how in the world is God going to get the oil out of you if you, don't, if, you don't, if you don't take the pressure? If you don't stay in the press and let the oil get squeezed out of you? Come on. And let this oil get squeezed out of you. I will not allow the storm to move me out of my place. So... And we've talked about this. So every time that there, there, there's a, there's a, 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 a great uh, event, every time something is, is, is coming up, the, the, the enemy will begin to rise up to try to hinder you and try to stop you. And you have to recognize it as warfare, take authority over it, and keep on moving and keep on going. You're not going to stop me. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I will not allow the storm to move me out of my place. And so as the, as, even as the prince of the power of the air comes to try to hinder, you stand up to the storm, come on, and not be uh, uh, concerned about the storm because in the midst of the storm, we need to begin to speak to the storm and say, peace, be still, come on. Begin to use your, you begin to use your voice. Oh my God, come on. You begin to use your voice and speak to the storm and say, "Storm, you're not going. The storm, the storm is not going to stop me. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Storm, you're not going to stop me. Come on, the storm is not going to stop. Even though the winds are blowing and and, and 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 it's beating against me vehemently, as it says in the New Testament, because you're anchored on the rock, because you're you're on the solid foundation." Because you're on a solid foundation, no matter, because the storm comes, you just begin to speak to that storm and say, be still. And see, the, the storm, again, I mentioned this, the storm is coming to try to silence the voice. The voice, what voice? The voice, the prophetic voice, the voice, the voice, the word of the Lord is trying to stop the word of the Lord. But we're going to use that, what you're trying to, to stop me, you're not going to stop me because I'm still going to use my voice. Come on. I'm still going to declare the word of the Lord. I'm still going to prophesy. Come on. I'm still going to pray. I'm still going to speak in tongues. Come on. I'm still going to do warfare. I'm still going to bind you. I'm still going to cast out devils. Even though the storm is calm. Come on. I'm standing. I'm anchored through the storm. And when the peace in the midst of the, sto in, in the, midst of the storm, I'm going to still be standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Come on, you're still standing. Look around, you're still standing. Come on. Let's begin to pray. I just want to drop that, that nugget. Let me read it one more time. The east wind carried him away, and he departed. And as the storm hurled of him out of his place, storm, you won't move me out of my place. Storm, you won't move me out of my place. Storm, you won't move me. You want us my voice. And Father, we come right now and we give you the praise, we give you the glory, we give you the honor. I come against the prince of the power of the air that will try to interfere with the communication lines of the people of God. That will get into the technology systems. I come against cyber warfare that will try to stop 
cyber, cyber warfare that will that will try to stop your devices from working to get down into uh, the communications to knock out towers in the spirit. Listen to me, to knock out your communication towers in the spiritual realm. I take authority over it now in the name of Jesus. They will try to hinder you from hearing what it is that the voice of the Lord is saying. We take authority over it now. And now, Father, we lift up as we pray. We, we send the word to Detroit right now, to Apostle Sonia's mother now. We send the word to the hospital now. It, the scripture tells us you sent your word and you healed them. And so I send the word now in the name of, I send the word now. I send the word and the word healed in Jesus' name. And out of, we speak out of the storm and we say, be healed in Jesus' name. We speak out the midst of the warfare, be healed in Jesus' name. That you will not stop the voice. The voice will go forth and we will declare his utterances in the earth realm now in the name of Jesus. And so check this out. So as we were talking about spiritual warfare. So listen to this. And so... The, the enemy attempts to take out the communication lines, one of the first lines of warfare, boom, take out the communication towers so that they can't communicate. The, uh, they have no way to communicate. And so, but we have been given, come on, we have been given a way to communicate that the enemy cannot stop. Come on. Back in the day, the, the, the military used to have a Morse code, you know, dot, dot, dash, 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 dot, 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 dash. And, and, and this, this, these codes had to be deciphered. But as citizens of the kingdom, come on, members of the spiritual army of God, we have our own Morse code that we use. And so when you don't know what to say, when you don't know what message to release as you are, come on. Romans 8, 26 said the spirit himself makes intercessions for you with groaners that cannot be uttered. So we get ready to release our spiritual Morse code against the enemy. That's right. Come on. Come on, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost wherever you are. If you're driving your car, if you're on your way to work, if you're in your home, if you're getting ready for work, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I will not lose my voice. I will not lose my authority. I will not be moved out of my place. I stand in my position in the spirit right now. And I begin to make decrees and I make declarations as an apostolic and prophetic voice in the kingdom of God. Ora bakito ramande broskotora braskete brebe bombara ramande o kora mandara robo sutura ramandara yosa o ramandara rabaseke o mandoro robo just go ahead and vote them right on out and let me give them a guy. I got a clown. I got a clown over here on Periscope making crazy comments. So let me give them a chance to get the gospel. All right. It says in the Bible in 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, that if this gospel be hid, uh, it says in Corinthians that if this gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost because the God of this world has blinded their minds. And so I pray that the God of this world will take, uh, I, I pray that the God of this world can no longer blind your eyes and blind your mind that you will see the light of the glorious gospel come forth to you now in Jesus' name. And I pray over you and I, I pray that you will be free from deliverance, that your mind will be set free, uh, that you will be free from rejection, that you will take a moment to hear and recognize that the gospel of Jesus Christ and that he loves you, that he died for you, that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day. So I'm not going to block you. I'm going to give you a chance to repent. Now. Skate table Raman Dara Dabosu Rabandiria Te Tokotura Rabandera Rosa.
And so I will I stand in the authority of the voice of the, the voice that has been given to me. I stand, begin to declare and decree who you are in the atmosphere. Begin to declare, I'm an apostle to the nations. I cannot be stopped. The prince of the power of the air, I'm unstoppable. I'm unmovable. I'm unshakable. Come on, make your de de declarations. Even though the storm comes, I speak to the storm in the midst of the storm, and I say, peace, be still. Storm, you cannot move me. Come on, begin to make your declaration about yourself. I'm God's vessel. I'm God's chosen one. I am the voice, of, I am the voice in the earth. I begin to declare. I begin to prophesy. Come on, I will cast out devils. Come on, I will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I will release the miraculous in the earth realm. Begin to make these declarations about yourself. In the midst of the storm, in the eye of the storm, in the face of the storm, I am who God says that I am. I can do what God says that I can do. I will stand and I will not be moved. Come on. That's right. Make your declaration. I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Come on. I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm more than a conqueror. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Come on. He always causes me the triumph. Make your declarations. Begin to stand on it. Father, I thank you for those who stand in their, in their authority and their right and they exercise their voice in the earth. Okay. We're not going to have any vulgarity. You need to repent. So we're going to have to block you. you got somebody want to cuss on. So I had to block them. Father, we thank you. I pray we get delivered from that cussing demon. Father, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I will not be distracted by foolishness today. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for activate miracles. Hashtag activate miracles. I thank you for hashtag made miracles. Father, I thank you that the miraculous is still, listen, that we stand in the miraculous. We stand in the gift of of the working of miracles. We stand on it now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the supernatural. I thank you for the miraculous. Father, I thank you how you, be, the woman from the other day in the miracle service, how the paralysis that was in her leg began to pass and she began to stand on her own. The shaking, she had the strength to stand up. Father, I thank you for activating miracles. Father, I thank you that you're releasing the miraculous. I thank you that you put this back into place. I thank you that you opened up deaf ears. Father, I thank you for what it is that you're doing. I thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles. I thank you for the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the great deliverances that will happen in setting this free in Detroit in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that we have power and authority over all devils and we have power to cure disease. Father, I thank you that we will walk in it, that we will demonstrate it. Come on, Jesus, I thank you that you're meeting us there. Holy Ghost, have your way in Detroit on next week in the name of Jesus. No weapon that is formed against this conference shall prosper. You will not hinder people. Lying, I silence lying devils, lying spirits that will try to keep people home and say you don't need to go to this conference. Don't go, don't go. They can't help you. But when God puts something in motion, it cannot be stopped. And I, Father, I thank you for what it is that you're doing in the name of Jesus. I pray that no accident or calamity or catastrophe comes your way in the name of Jesus. As you travel, that there be no hindrances in the airport, no lost luggage, any things like that in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for those that are coming in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you there will be no hindrances in, in finances or revenues in the name of Jesus. I thank you that every budget will be made and be met in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for what you're doing now in the name of Jesus. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise even now in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray right now for someone who has... Um, you're having a, a breathing, some breathing difficulty. And it's not like it's, it's, there's something that's going on. I feel it in the, in the chest region. It's like, you can't take a deep breath. You can breathe, but you're taking short breaths. Uh, but you, you can't take a deep breath. I take authority over this thing that is attacking your, 
Uh, it seems like it's attacking your respiratory, but it's also attack the, attacking your digestive system. I take authority over this right now, and I speak to the digestive system. I speak to the respiratory system. Whew. I command that blockage to open now in Jesus' name. I command that blockage to open now. I command that blockage to open now. Let me describe it a little bit more so it's it's as it's, it, it feels like it's somewhat of a respiratory thing, but I feel the fire of God being released upon your chest even now. Um, it's almost like there's a, it's a respiratory, but this it's also connected with digestive system. It's, um, for some reason, it's almost like there's some kind of a blockage where you can't take deep breaths. But in the name of Jesus, if you lay your hand on your chest, I release the fire of God. I release the fire of God to come upon you now. To come upon you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Burn it up. Burn it away. Passages become clear. Passages become clear now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So we pray that your passages, passageways come open now. Just take a deep breath. Somebody, you're, you're dealing with this respiratory situation and it's like a, also like it's, it's respiratory and it's also dealing, it's connected with your digestive system as well. So just take a deep breath. And I command it to go from you now. In Jesus' name. I command it to go from you now. In Jesus' name. I command you to go in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this. Father, we thank you for what you're doing now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Now, I'm going to pray for some joints. Someone's having some, some joint issues. Some joint issues. Like a wrist. There's something going on with a wrist. Uh, there's also... Something going on with a shoulder. I don't know if this is the same person or if it's two different people. But begin to move your wrist in the name of Jesus. I speak to that. I speak to the joint. I command the joints uh, to loosen up, to function fluidly now in the name of Jesus. And I take authority, even as I'm praying for that. There's also a situation, carpal tunnel. Identify yourself as I'm praying for you. There's a carpal tunnel situation. And that there's the pain in the uh in the forearm and even down in the wrist area the your grip is very weak but in the name of jesus who is that person i'm on those of you that's on facebook live i'm also on periscope at the same time and so these i'm trying to get everybody to identify themselves as i get these words of knowledge all right so who is that dealing with the um uh carpal tunnel situation either you're on now or you'll be on the rebroadcast but if you're on now let's see those of you who have not been following, we've had all kind of miracles happening on Periscope for months now. Father, we thank you. And so begin to open and close your hand and that, that and the strength comes back into your hand now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now we say the strength begins to come back into it now. In Jesus, your grip becomes the, comes back. The strength comes back into it now. In Jesus' name. And then the person with the shoulder issue. If you begin to just lift it. Um, okay, yes, Lord, I thank you. That there's been carpal tunnel in, in, in your elbow. All right, man of God. We're believing God in the name of Jesus. Just begin to move it while we're praying this morning. We got the, we got the carpal tunnel situation on, um, on Facebook Live. So y'all, Periscope fam, come on. Join in. Facebook Live, we're praying in the name of Jesus, just begin to move it, man of God. We release the fire of God to come into it and to be strengthened and to be healed now, the strength to come back into it now in Jesus' name. And now, those, the shoulder situation. My doctor said something about your finger. Okay, well, we pray that the sensation comes back into somebody's on here with the carpal tunnel. Are you begin to move it? Okay, 
And I command the sensation to come back into it now in Jesus' name. And as I'm praying for that still, there's something going on with a shoulder. It's like some immobility in the shoulder. I don't know if it's the... Um, so just begin to move it in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you. I missed that one. So, Father, we pray somebody with carpal tunnel and rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, we take authority over it. So that is the... Um, so that was the joint situation and the carpal tunnel, All right? In the name of Jesus, come on, exercise your faith in the name of Jesus. I take authority over rheumatoid arthritis. I take authority over carpal tunnel right now in the name of Jesus. I remember I prayed for a lady one time up in Burlington, uh, North Carolina in a conference. And when she squeezed my hand, she, after I prayed for her, she squeezed my hand like a man. Come on, the strength came back into her hand. And so we believe in God for you right now in Jesus' name. Let me know what's happening. That Let me know the one with the sensation in there, that the numbness in the fingertips, the one with the pain in the forearm, pain in the elbow, Bishop, uh, the, the carpal tunnel in the elbow, in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, we're exercising our faith, and it's happening in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And we've been having so many miraculous events happening uh, on these Periscope broadcasts and on Facebook Live. Come on. We're believing. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you. We praise you. Where's the person that said they had the rheumatoid and they had the carpal tunnel? I need to know. Come on, talk to me. Let me know what's going on. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Begin to stretch those hands out. Begin to stretch those fingers out. Come on. Begin to bend, bend that elbow. Begin to turn that wrist around. Able to close my hand more than usual. All right. What is that? I have true heart. All right, I have true heart. Come on, keep doing it in the name of Jesus. We're believing. We, we got a few more minutes on the broadcast. Somebody said the carpal tunnel person just said they can close their hand more than usual. Father, we thank you right now in Jesus' name. We command that pain to go. We command the hand to function normally. We take authority. I, I'm stretching my fingers, praise God. Father, in the name of you, that, that the circulation flows through flows through your hands all the way down into your fingertips now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And not only that, as we're praying for those with this situation, there's someone else with another type of a, a, a numbness. And this numbness is like in your entire arm, okay? Your entire arm is going numb. But in the name of Jesus, we, com we command the, the circulation of the blood to come, the nervous system to function normally now in the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. So if you just begin to, to move it, this thing's not lifting off of me yet. Oh, Facebook Live just logged out. Okay. Y'all hang with me. I want to keep praying. Father, I thank you right now. You've got numbness in, like in your in, in your whole arm. Just begin to stretch it out and just begin to move it and just believe that the, that it, that the sensation is going to go. I don't know why Facebook Live don't like me like that. It just logs out. Itaradabondorabasaya. All right, I'm logging back in over here. Thank you, Jesus. Move that arm. Listen, next week, everybody, come on, next week, we're going to be, I had to come back on Facebook Live, it just shut off by itself. Next week in Detroit, July 8th and 9th, I'm going to be praying for miracles. Come on, miracle deliverance. We're having a deliverance service, deliverance conference, uh, we're gonna, you're going to begin Sessions on deliverance, people are going to be getting delivered. But listen, not only that, there is going to be a release of the miraculous, okay? Acts 19 and 11, it says that God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. That from his body, handkerchiefs and aprons were taken, come on, and the demons came out of people and many were healed. I'm bringing... I'm bringing the I'm bringing the cloth with me. I saw where to get it uh, yesterday. I'm gonna bring the I'm bringing the cloth with me, Apostle Sonia. I'm bringing the cloth with me, and we're gonna believe God for the miraculous, for the miraculous. 
I'm bringing it with me. I'm bringing it. I'm believing God. I'm also bringing the oil that's been on the altar at the miracle service that we had uh, here in Detroit. The oil was sitting on the altar during the miracle service with that anointing. Glory to God. So I will be bringing it with me. And so we're, we're getting ready. We're excited about it. Getting back to uh, getting back to Detroit. Haven't been to Detroit in a couple of years. And so we're going to close, close, get ready to close out. But listen, hashtag activate miracles, hashtag setting the captives free next week. Listen, get, go to setting the captives free dot eventbrite dot com and register. Okay. Setting the captives free dot eventbrite dot com dot com for your um to register that includes lunch forty dollars and you get lunch you don't get that in you don't get that in conferences forty dollars and you get lunch come on and so we're excited about it we're excited about it yes yeah though we got to get the oil from off the altar and bring it up there to the D. All right, everybody. I'm getting ready to log out. Thank y'all so much. Uh, also, set your calendars for the first 50 people will receive a gift. All right. Apostle Sonny said the first 50 people at the, at the uh, register will get a gift. Oh, you got your books. Praise God. All right, so let's get registered. Come on, pray against this, the warfare that will rise up against you. Um, so again, Detroit, Detroiters, listen, next week, July 8th and 9th, the flyers on my Facebook page, Facebook, we will be in town on next week for setting the captives free. <laughs> Do that. All right, y'all, listen, I'm getting ready to go. This is Apostle Mark T. May, Violent Faith Ministries. And the IAPM, the International Association of Apostolic and Prophetic Ministries. I'm the apostle of the IAPM. Listen, before we go out, you can get my books. Here's my book on the apostolic tech time systems, the apostolic pattern for believers. All right, lulu.com. Ash Dodd, dealing with breaking generational curses. Lulu.com. The Wild Ass Spirit, Who Let It Loose in the Church, the Forward. It's by Apostle John Eckhart. All right, you want to get these books, lulu.com. I'll have them at the conference as well. It's going to be on the book table. Uh, my other book, Did God Say That? I don't have it sitting here, but Did God Say That? Learning to Judge Prophecy, all right, will also be available at the book table. Looking, if you want to mark your calendars ahead, October, I think it's October 7th, 7th and 8th, we will be in Dallas. Come on, Dallas, Texas. Texas, we're coming. Setting the captives free. Hashtag activate miracles. We're coming to Dallas. All right, y'all. Got to run. Got blessed. And remember, the violent take it by force. Peace. <laughs>